my name is Jan Guit. I'm a lecturer at the University of Rwanda. I'm, I'm an author. I'm a, I'm a writer as well. I've been doing journalism for close to eight years now. You know, and I've been living in Rwanda for the last five years. It was back in 2016. I was working as a journalist. I was writing for Jeune Afrique at the time. I started reading a lot about Rwanda. I had read a book uh, by a French journalist uh, about the genocide. And I was really very, very sad and very, a bit depressed by the book. So then a couple of years after that, I started reading different news about Rwanda and I, I was really surprised. So I said to myself, yes, let, let's go and see what is happening there since things seem to have changed, which was really intriguing to me. That was the context. So I, I, I visited in 2016 for the first time. I had the opportunity to come back a couple of months after that, trying to understand in the, what, had, had, what had happened between uh, me reading you know, the, when I read the book in 2004 and 2016. But the gap uh, between what I had in mind, what I discovered, what I saw, was, was huge. So it got me interested in you know, trying to understand how that happened. I think many people had heard good things about Rwanda, but of course I had the benefit of, uh, of experience. Uh, I mean, I, I had visited, I had read a lot, I had met people that I consider friends. To be frank, I mean, I, I knew that Rwanda was actually, uh, on that front, was, was probably safer than, than many other African countries. It was clear to me at the time, so I had no, no, no fear at all. Rwanda uh, matters a lot to me. Rwanda means three things to me. Number one, sacrifice. And, uh, and when I say sacrifice, I also mean greatness, because it's always greatness in, in sacrifice. Number two, uh, hope. But I'm not talking about the kind of hope that we hear a lot on social media, on the media in general. I mean genuine hope. Uh, hope that is, I would say, rooted in actual achievements which is a different kind of food. And then uh, resilience, of course. These are things that I highly value, and uh, especially the first one. And I think Rwanda more than any other country that I know of, at least in Africa. That's why I wanted to be part of the Rwanda's uh, journey. My was more, was more like, I mean, why, why do you wait so long? <laughs> maybe, maybe you should try to apply earlier. She was part of the, the whole process. She understands Rwanda as much as I do. Um, she loves Rwanda as much as I do. It wasn't an issue, really. It was more of, you know, when is the right time to do that? So I was teaching journalism class, a journalism class in here. Then I started receiving messages and calls, and that's how I, I was aware of that. So of course I was, I was very happy. I was proud as well for the reason I mentioned, the, the three things that Rwanda uh, means to me. But I also felt, I would say, uh, a sense of duty to sort of live up to what, what I understand as, uh, as, as a trust, in a way, uh, placed in me. And probably I won't have to think too much about renewing, <laughs> renewing my, my visa, which is something uh, that is significant, of course. For the things I do on a daily basis, uh, it, it won't change much. I think uh, I have that sense of duty, which was there before, but uh, of course it's, it's different now. I'm just grateful to the, cause the government, of course. Even more than that, I'm, I'm grateful to, the, to Rwanda as a country and to Rwandans, of course, uh, because I mean, I've been blessed by, you know, a lot of support and a uh, very lot of kindness actually from, from so many people. So I would like to, yeah, to thank them and uh, just hope that um, I'll be a useful citizen. 